This instructional video is designed to give a demonstration of the ways we can look at and think about path independence or path dependence. In this specific case, I am going to be talking about work. And if we write it out in integral form, we argue that minus the integral P D V. That is work and it is path dependent. That means that, in principle, we have to know what the path is from state one to state two to determine the amount of work done. However, what I'm going to show you is a case that it doesn't guarantee that different paths give different outcomes. What it does guarantee is that we have to know about this information. So let's have two different cases. So in case one, we're going to use sine of volume to define our pressure. In case two, we're going to use the negative sine of volume. And we'll actually do this over one full cycle of the sine wave. So from volume equals zero to volume equals two pi. It's a made up case. So, that means then that the work for case one will be negative integral from zero to two pi, sine v d v. And for case two, it's gonna be negative integral from zero to two pi of negative sine v d v. You can take out your calculus and follow along Essentially, what we'll have then is negative cosine 2 pi minus cosine of 0 versus two negatives will cancel. So we'll just have cosine of 2 pi minus cosine of 0. And so in this case, if we just do the math only, then we'll end up with the negative of 1 minus 1, which is just 0, compared to 1 minus 1, which is also 0. And at this point, you might say, well, you said it was all path dependent. And we have two different paths, and we're getting the same answer. Well, what may be useful then is to take the graphical approach and consider the argument that this is supposed to correspond to the area under the curve. And that will illustrate why this ends up not exactly working out the way we might expect. So for case one, minus sine being the thing being integrated, we'll look down first, come back up and complete the cycle. In this case, the double negative gives us a positive. So if we're doing this graphically, we start by going up and then down. And so in this case, we can see that we start off by entering a deficit and work and then pick it back up. Over here, we're picking up work and then hitting a deficit. So what we can say then is that if we're using our area under the curve reasoning, well, this area corresponds to this area. And we'll use uh, green this area corresponds to this area. And if we're comparing across two cases, then it's straightforward to say, oh yes, we will get the same numerical value. And we can understand where the zero comes from because these two areas are equal. But what we have to recognize is that beyond the mathematics, we want to understand the physics of what's going on and have some visual or graphical representation to help complete the explanation of how we can have something that is path dependent given two different values to go through and still end up with an identical answer of having no network being done. And so 
having that ability to understand the difference between what the math tells us and what the physics tells us allows us to apply these concepts and take advantage of them when we're doing chemistry.